Reaction continues and the tributes continue to come in to word yesterday that Norman Jewison had died at the age of 97. The Canadian filmmaking legend, in fact, renowned and regarded as one of Canada's greatest ever filmmakers. His work spanned decades. There were classic comedies. There were many thought-provoking social dramas. In the Heat of the Night comes to mind. It was Fiddler on the Roof, Moonstruck, so many greats. His publicist confirmed to CBC News he died peacefully on Saturday. And last night, Canada Tonight on CBC News Network, Travis was speaking to another great Canadian filmmaker, Adam Agoyan, about Norman Jewison's legacy. His films won almost 50 Academy Award nominations. Uh, he, no director, certainly no director from this country, has ever reached the heights that Norman did. And yet he was incredibly generous. Um, you know, uh, I just owe so much to him. I remember when I was 13 years old going to the Haida Cinema in Victoria, B.C. and seeing Jesus Christ Superstar, and it changed my life. He, he was able to make these films that were so emotionally accessible. Adam Agoyan, as he spoke to CBC News Network last night, just one of many reactions that we're getting from great Canadian directors and others in the film industry. We know, as I have this conversation with Eli Glasner. You're going to see some of the tributes as we continue to discuss this. But I was struck, Eli, and I'm awfully glad to have you with me this morning, by your own social media posts, because you could feel it oh. viscerally almost just from reading your words about how much personally you were struck by this. You talked about the, the progressive heart of so many of his films and the yeah. way he championed Canadian storytellers. I mean as, as Adam was saying there, like, he was so successful. 46 nominations attached to his films. He didn't need to really come back to Canada and, and shepherd the next generation of filmmakers forward. But when you talk about legacy, the biggest thing, and as his career kind of shifted, he was looking to the future. And not his future, but the next Norman and Sally's and whoever was going to follow in his footsteps, setting up the Canadian Film Centre. If you're in Canada now and you're thinking, okay, you know what, I want to make movies. I don't want to go down to Hollywood. I want to tell our stories. One of the first things you do is you start looking at the film center because it's this amazing incubator for media and for film and for storytelling and that's principally because Jewison at that point in the 80s was you know what we need this Australia has one America has one the Brits where's ours and so he created this thing and then you look at the amazing films that he's made and you talk about like in the heat of the night I was watching Moonstruck last night I mean talk about being struck by the co the connection the the electricity between in, uh, Nicolas, Cage? Nicolas Cage and Cher the way he picks her up we're going to bed all right fine you know and just kind of rolling but just pause on that yeah. because she wrote a glowing oh. trip Tribute to him, said she would never have her Oscar were it not for the performance that he brought yeah. out of her and of Nicholas Cage. And, and it was a battle. I was I was listening to an interview from Norman himself talking about working with those actors, and he really respected actors and wanted to push them out of their comfort zone. But I look at that progressive heart. I mean, you look at his best films: The Hurricane, In the Heat of the Night, and Fiddler on the Roof, Jesus Christ Superstar. Where did that come from? Where did this guy who's Parents sold dry goods in Toronto, you know, in the beginning half of the last century. And part of it was that Jewison always felt like an outsider. And mm. I think that's why he had the empathy. When he was growing up, people thought he was Jewish. So he was teased in school, which is why he says, ironically, he got to make Fiddler on the Roof because the executives assumed that he was Jewish, although he wasn't. You know, he was a goy. And then you look at when he got older, he went down hitchhiking through the American South. He got in trouble for sitting with the black passengers in the back of the bus. So you start to see where this guy, and the, the other amazing thing about him is like, he was this titan of Canadian filming, but in person, he was like, he teased, called himself a gnome. He's just a very small, kind of affable, almost like elf-like energy, and so approachable. I was listening to what Adam McGoyan said. I talked to Barry Averich last night. One of the first people he looked to when he came to Toronto, another great director uh, and filmmaker, was 
was Norman Jewison. He was one of the, because he was the example of success in Canada. He saw his movie with Al Pacino and Justice for All went, there's a Canadian doing that, went and had a meeting with Norman and kind of Norman set him on the right path. You know, it's beautiful. I know you're going to be talking about this through the day today. You're going to come back next. It's so perfect in so many ways. Oscar nominations yeah. coming out next hour and we'll be live with those together as we pay tribute to a man who had 46, as you say, over the time of his uh, career. And uh, I, w I was thinking about how we talked about it when they opened the screening room at the yes. Hazleton Hotel, yeah. just this past TIFF. And we saw him at 97 and thought he looked frail. That's where I, yeah. that's, I was there last September. We're all crowded into this tiny space under the hotel, renaming the screening room. Everyone wants to share their love with Norman. The only thing he wanted to say, and he was, you know, getting older, was make sure there's Canadian films on that screen. Even while Beautiful. we were all there to express our admir appreciation. To him. Isn't that fantastic? Eli, thank you. Thank you for sure. this, the tribute and the look at the legacy. And next hour, Oscar nominations right. to come live with Eli.